Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Shreya Savage. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 28th of December. Indian Prime Minister Modi flags off farmers' trail amid protest against farm laws. Inching inflation batters life in Pakistan administered Kashmir. An Afghan President Ghani gives nod to next round of peace talks in Doha. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday virtually flagged off the 100th Kisan Trail, a multi-commodity train service dedicated to farmers amid ongoing protests against the centre's three contentious agriculture laws. A deadlock continues to persist as protesting farmers warned the laws that liberalise agriculture sector be scrapped, while the government has offered to amend them after holding talks. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday virtually flagged off the 100th Kisan Rail Train Service amid ongoing protests against the centre's three contentious agricultural laws. The 100th train dedicated to farmers as part of the multi-commodity train service will carry fruits and vegetables from Sangola in Maharashtra to Shalimar in West Bengal. PM Modi said the train service over the last four months has hugely strengthened small and marginal farmers who account for 80% of the peasantry in the country. The rail has been connected to the whole वो अब पूरे देश के कृषि बाजार को भी जोड़ रही हैं, एक कर रही हैं। साथियों किसान रेल सेवा देश के किसानों की आमदनी बढ़ाने की दिशा में भी एक बहुत बड़ा कदम है। Meanwhile, as the anti-farm laws protests at New Delhi's borders entered 33rd day. The central government on Monday called representatives of protesting farmers for a meeting on 30th of December for further discussions to address their issues. Previously, five rounds of talks between the farmer unions and the government have failed to break the month-long deadlock as farmers want the laws be scrapped while the government has offered amendments based on facts and logic. A two-day dry run for coronavirus vaccine program started in four Indian states on Monday. Focus on management of possible adverse events after immunization and dry runs that includes checks on coal storage and transportation arrangements will be part of the program that will be carried out in the chosen districts in each state. A two-day COVID-19 vaccination dry run began on Monday in four states of India. Krishna district in India's southern Andhra Pradesh state did the first mock drill in the country in presence of senior district and state officials. The dry run process included the possible adverse scenarios during and after administering the vaccine. It also includes the checks on transportation arrangements for vaccine and coal storage facilities. We are going ahead with uh, um, seeing the uh, how the entire process flow is done, what are the uh, any um, um, shortcomings are there that would be noticed in the drive. In this, uh, we are uh, just testing our uh, uh, total preparedness, uh, like uh, how is our cold chain and uh, how is our uh, COVID uh, uh, software and uh, uh, how the uh, real uh, a vaccination program is going to be done in the uh, future. Other three states identified for the dry run include Punjab, Assam and Gujarat. Most of the places followed preparations on the dry run before actual mock drills. 
India is expected to cover about 300 million people in its first phase of vaccination that include elderly over the age of 50 years, health workers, frontline workers and those below the age of 50 years having certain comorbidities. With more than 10 million positive cases of coronavirus, India has been the second worst affected country by the deadly virus in the world in terms of caseload. More than 147,000 people have succumbed to the virus in the country. In news from Pakistan, leaders of opposition alliance Pakistan Democratic Movement on Sunday reiterated their demand seeking resignation of Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan by 31st of January. Pakistan People's Party Chairperson Bilawal Bhutto Zardari said the opposition had united on PDM's platform and will together make efforts to end the business of puppet government. Accusing Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan of being ignorant of issues afflicting the country, Pakistan People's Party Chairman Bilawal Bhutto Zardari on Sunday reiterated the demand made by the 11-party opposition alliance Pakistan Democratic Movement seeking his resignation by January 31. Addressing a rally commemorating the 13th death anniversary of former Prime Minister Benazir Bhutto, Bilawal said PM Imran Khan will be held accountable for unprecedented rise in the prices of essential commodities and making the lives of masses miserable. He said the puppet Prime Minister is not even cognizant of the issues being faced by the countrymen because he did not come into power through votes, while adding that if Imran Khan does not resign by January 31, then the PDM will march to Islamabad. The Pakistan Democratic Movement has been holding massive anti-government rallies against the Imran Khan government since October 16 on the charges of election rigging, corruption and dominance of Pakistani army in politics of the country. Moving on, Residents in Pakistan-administered Kashmir, which is already marginalized, are facing the brunt of inflation amid coronavirus outbreak. The poor are finding it even hard to feed themselves due to unprecedented rise in prices of commodities in the illegally occupied region. Inflation due to massive debts, rampant corruption and inefficient policies by Pakistani establishment has hit hard the residents of Pakistan-administered Kashmir. The residents of the illegally occupied region are irked due to the rising prices of consumer goods, including food which has reached all-time high amid coronavirus outbreak, adding to their ongoing woes. In such a situation where the middle class struggles to maintain their standard of living, the poor are finding it even hard to feed themselves. Middle class families were able to eat 15 hours of roti. But when the corona is closed, it is very difficult to eat 2 hours of roti. If middle class people eat 2 hours of roti, then you can eat it. The middle class people are coming from the floor, so what are they doing? Everything is wrong. 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 What will people do? We will be able to do something with us. We will be able to do something with us. What rate is it? Locals accused Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan of being apathetic towards their plight, blaming that the economic losses being faced by Pakistan due to policy paralysis are being compensated from regions under its illegal control. In news from Afghanistan, Afghanistan's President Ashraf Ghani has agreed to hold the next round of the peace negotiations with the Taliban in Doha after an agreement was made based on the suggestion of the head of the negotiating team and the head of the High Council for National Reconciliation. Ghani earlier this month had said that the next round of the negotiation should take place in Afghanistan. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani has agreed to hold the next round of peace negotiations in Doha, informed Wahid Omar, 
head of the Office of Public and Strategic Affairs of the President. Omar said the agreement was made based on the suggestion of the head of the negotiating team and the head of the High Council for National Reconciliation, but the government still maintains its stance that future round of talks, besides the next one, be held within Afghanistan. This comes as Ghani met with Abdullah Abdullah, head of the High Council for National Reconciliation, on Sunday at the Presidential Palace to address the next round of the peace talks. President Ghani earlier this month has said that the next round of peace negotiations should take place in Afghanistan. He said the Afghan government is ready to negotiate with the Taliban in an any area of Afghanistan that the group chooses. The negotiations of the Afghan government and the Taliban were in Doha for 94 days, during which they agreed on the procedural rules for the talks. The negotiation team paused their talks for 23 days and agreed to resume the talks on January 5. Moving on to news from Nepal. In perhaps its most overt intervention in Nepal's internal affairs, Vice Minister in the International Department of the Communist Party of China, Zhuo Yezhou, met Nepal's former PM Pushpa Kamal Dehel on Monday in an effort to broker peace between the two rival factions of ruling Nepal Communist Party, nearly a week after Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli dissolved the parliament. Earlier on Sunday, the Chinese officials also met Nepal's President Bidya Devi Bhandari and PM Oli. Nepal plunged into a political crisis after Oli, known for his pro-Beijing leanings in a surprise move, dissolved the 275-member House of Representatives amidst a tussle for power with the hill. The move has sparked street protests in the Himalayan nations as it grapples with the COVID-19 pandemic. In news from Bangladesh, the 15th edition of the National Wushu Championship concluded in Bangladesh's capital Dhaka over the past weekend. The three-day event was attended by around 200 athletes despite the coronavirus pandemic. The Banga Bandhu 15th National Wushu Championship 2020 concluded over the past weekend in Bangladeshi capital Dhaka. Inaugurated by Bangladeshi State Minister for Youth and Sports, Zahid Esan Russell, formally last week, the three-day event was attended by around 200 athletes, despite the coronavirus pandemic. This year's Wushu Championship in Dhaka marked the birth centenary of the country's father of the nation, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman. Wushu is a form of martial art which has a long history in reference to Chinese martial arts. It was developed in 1949 in an effort to standardize the practice of traditional Chinese martial arts. The Bangladesh Wushu Federation through such championships aims to promote the study and safe practice of Wushu across the country. The COVID-19 pandemic and the lockdown imposed to curb its spread in India has significantly altered lifestyles. As people have now become more conscious about their health, Locals in Western Rajkot city are taking up yoga and meditation to counter the physical and psychological impact of the pandemic. Have a look. People in India's Western Rajkot city are increasingly taking up yoga and meditation to counter the physical and psychological impact of the coronavirus situation in the country. Sitting cross-legged wearing whites, the yoga students were seen doing breathing exercises in a temple compound of Rajkot. Most believe pranayam, yogic breathing exercises, improve the immunity of the body and meditation calms down the mind, reducing stress levels. Now, depression, hypertension. So, with this pranayam, सभी के दिल और दिमाग में हल्कापन महसूस होता है और हमारे जीवन में हर आने वाले रोगों को रोग प्रतिकारक शक्तियां बढ़ जाती है रोगों से हम मुक्त होने लगते हैं आजकल कोरोना की वजह से जो मेंटल स्ट्रेस हो रहा है सभी को कि हमको कोरोना हो जाएगा शायद हमको ये वहां जाएंगे तो हो जाएगा तो हम जो ध्यान लगाते हैं तो हमारा मेंटल का जो मेन माइंड का जो लेवल है ना वो अप आ जाता है हम डिप्रेशन में हो अगर हो तो ध्यान से हम उसमें से बाहर आ सकते हैं इसीलिए आजकल 
योग तो सभी श्वास उश्वास की प्रक्रिया से करेंगे तो सबको अच्छा ही मिल India has been the second worst affected country by COVID-19 in the world with more than 10 million cases to its count. However, the active as well as new cases are coming down in the country. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebookcom newsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.